are we going to start the video like that? Okay, cool. Hi, <laughs> welcome to the Steve and Dan show. My name is Dan Holloway. This is my co-host Steve Herbert, who basically just sprung that on us out of nowhere. Um, if this is the first time watching, normally we're a little bit more organised than this on the uh, opening, but we're going to roll with it. It's going to happen. So my background is corporate software sales, where I was working until September 2016. 70 hours per week, I was feeling very unfulfilled, I was trading all of my time for money, didn't want to be doing that anymore. And my wake up moment was when I was looking at jobs in some of the big London software companies where if you, you know, are really successful there, you can earn up to like a quarter of a million pounds a year. And I realized that no income goal in the past had ever brought me fulfillment or happiness once I'd hit it. So why did I think that an even bigger income goal in the future was gonna bring me any fulfillment or happiness like it didn't make sense I would just be doing more of the same and so when I realized that I realized that I had to change path I had to do something different and that was when I discovered online business this whole community that we were a part of met all of these awesome people a couple of which are on the call today and uh, yeah since then it's been a real whirlwind lots of traveling lots of exciting personal development and growth and meeting loads of people and it's been very very cool Steve, if you'd like to give a bit of an intro, please, for anyone who's watching for the first time. I would be happy to, and then we will hand it over to Lewis in a minute. But first, uh, Steve, husband, father, entrepreneur, started and grew several businesses over the years. Love doing that. Love the challenge. Really enjoy, you know, creating something out of nothing and the, the flexibility that you can have uh, running your own business. I quickly figured out that... I really didn't control my time as much as I thought I could because at the end of the day, you know, the customers pay your bills and you've got to answer to them at some level. And I felt like they were really ruling my life and I didn't have the kind of freedom that I really wanted to spend more time with my family, which is a big reason why I would start and run my own business. So I went searching for something different and that's when I came across the SFM and everything kind of changed from there on out. Um, so Lewis, we give pretty, brief uh, bios of ourselves because we're here every week. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, your background, that sort of thing. Introduce yourself to okay. the audience. Hey everyone, my name's Lewis. Uh, I'm 26 years old and I'm just from outside London in the UK. Uh, I work in events doing sound and lighting equipment for corporate events and uh, theatre shows, stuff like that. And it was something that I, it, it, it's been a long time coming where I haven't felt fulfilled and motivated by any of it. When I was in, when I left school, I actually went into higher education uh, because that's what I thought you had to do, you know, go to higher education, university, that sort of thing, take that pathway. I'm from a very working class background. So my dad's idea was always to sort of, you know, get work, go into a trade, learn a trade and sort of work for yourself. That was the way to go. Um, after about two months in higher education, I quit. I hated it. I hated school anyway, so I don't know why I thought I'd like higher education. After about two months, I quit and straight out into the world of work, bouncing around from sort of job to job, really. Didn't really have a clear vision of what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go. You know, I didn't have like a, a job in my mind where I was, whereas other people were were set where they wanted to go. I didn't have that in my mind, you know, what I wanted to do. So I tried a few things and it was there was a lot of trade work, I went to a bit of construction, ended up doing painting and decorating for, for a good amount of time. Uh, and it weren't that I didn't enjoy it, but it was very reliant on other people for work. And then when I wasn't getting work, uh, the money would dry up. So I felt like I needed something with a bit more security. And that led me to looking for something that was full time, looking working for someone. Uh, my brother actually works for the company that I work for now. We got I got the job through him. I'd always had an interest in music and stuff like that, so I thought, you know, getting into sound equipment and learning how to do that might set off something and be able to get into it that way. But it it really it didn't. It just sort of um, yeah, it got it. It just got days the, the amount of work that you had to do and the amount of time that you had to put in and it, it just really got to me and I suppose my wake-up moment really was when was 
not last January, the January before, I was in Thailand on holiday with my girlfriend. We was there for about four weeks, having a, the best time. And we got a very unexpected phone call towards the end of the holiday that her dad had had an unexpected heart attack. So we were trying to get flights home and, you know, getting on the emergency flights. We managed to get one home a couple of days later. Um, we was back home for about a week and he had another one and he passed away very unexpectedly. And the next few months after that were really, really, really tough for us. It took a lot of strain on our relationship. It was obviously a really hard time for her. The first time either of us had, had gone through the loss of someone that close. And my job was just keeping me away from her when she was, when she needed me most, I would be working you know, like, like Dan said, with his job was sort of 70 hour weeks, 80 hour weeks sometimes just to, to get the overtime to, to keep the money up. And I'd work up and down the country, uh, in Europe, spending weeks away from home. And it put a real strain on our relationship. And it sort of opened my eyes to think, well, this is, this is just the way it's going. Is my connection going? It's just coming up and saying my connection is going. Am I good? So yeah. the audio is fine. Um, visually, it's a little bit choppy, but we can hear you, buddy. So carry on. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So where was I? Strained relationship. Yeah. Like having to be away so much during this difficult time with your girlfriend and her losing her dad. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was really tough for her. And it's not like, you know, it, she didn't, it wasn't my fault. I was just doing what I had to do to, to work and, was trying to save up to, to move out, but it was just, it was affecting the relationship too much. So at that point I realized that I had to try and find something, you know, I looked at other people who were doing what I do, who were sort of 20 years older as well down the line. And although they, they were earning good money, they, they all moaned about how much time they'd spend away from their family, missing their kids grow up. And that, that was just the moment for me when I was like, that, that is not my life. I'm, there's no way that I'm, I don't want that for me. I want to be able to be there with my kid. Even though I don't have kids now, it's a massive driver for me in this business is to be able to, when I do have kids, to be able to spend as much time with them as I want, when I want. So that was the real eye opener for me. So I started looking online for, for solutions, really looking for jobs that would enable me to have a bit more freedom. Um, you know, the laptop lifestyle, as they say, I, I sort of got into sort the first thing I sort of got into was looking at website design and things like that. Just something that I knew that I could, as long as I got a laptop, I could work from home if I needed to or, or, or whatever. And yeah, so after looking for that and sort of motivational videos on YouTube, I came across Dan's ad and I've never looked back really. There, there was, it was sometimes when it was when it was tough making the decision to join, um, mm. finding that uh, having that scepticism. You know, I've always been brought up to think, it, usually if it's too good to be true, it usually is. You know, that was my my thinking on a lot of things. I thought, oh, this just 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 seems like my dreams, and I just I can't believe that it could actually happen to me. So yeah, but after after a good bit of time of of backwards and forwards i decided to go all in and uh i'm so glad that i did so and that's probably brought me to where i am now awesome, awesome. thank you for that buddy yeah that's great so i the uh i don't know if dan if you know much about this but there was a period in my life when i did basically what you're doing now um i spent a lot of time on the technical side of theater uh, in my life. And I did, I kind of did the same thing. I, don't, I had a whole lot of fun. I was young, single, and I got to travel the world doing it, which was great, you know, but yeah, I, I did the same thing. I saw the guys who were 20 years older than me and they weren't happy. They were doing it cause they had to, they didn't see that they had a, any other choice. And I think it's, it's great that you realized you had a choice. So many people don't even think they have a choice. To, to do something different. They, they just see, you know, this is what everybody does. This is what I've got to do. And, uh, you know, ha just having that perspective already sets you apart from <laughs> so many people. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, so you, you have some technical skills. I mean, audio engineer, that's, you know, 
you're dealing with technology all day. Uh, what did you think? I mean, were you afraid of, you know, learning something new or were you looking at this as a, a fun challenge of the stuff that you'd have to learn? Um, I suppose at first I, I thought it was, it would be a fun challenge <clears throat> because when I first got into it, I thought, all right, I'm just going to be learning how to use technology to market online. And that's what I thought it was. I'm going to be a marketing expert, you know, just like learning how to do that sort of stuff. But to be honest with you, everything that I've got out of it so far is, it's got nothing to do with that. To be honest, it's completely like on its head. Like, don't get me wrong, but there is a big part of it that is that. And I have learned a whole lot, but, I'd say the most that I've gained so far is just completely all in my head and how I look at things, uh, belief in myself and, and just mindset and, and things like that is just, it, it was something that I wasn't even expecting to get when I signed up really. But yeah, that, that, that's definitely the main thing so far. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And I know, um, obviously we've spoken, we've met several times, like we've met in London. Um, and, and, even I think your first, your first SFM event, I remember you saying that you were going to come to one of the meetups before, um, but then you sort of talked yourself out of it. And then the next time you plucked up the courage and you went for it. And I feel like there's been a couple of key pivotal decisions maybe that you've made, Lewis, which have been, they've sort of set in motion this new path, like of facing fear, overcoming fear, you know, overcoming the self doubts and the limitations and so on and so forth. So Let's just rewind before we go into that. Let's just rewind to your, your wake up moment, um, which I think for a lot of people that, that join this community, there needs to be some sort of wake up moment, something that inspires them to decide that they need to change, decide they need to go down a different path. Obviously, for you, you know, girlfriend's father, um, you know, very, very uh, un unfortunate and sad thing to happen for sure. Do you feel, though, that that, that moment, that defining moment, was that like, I mean, I'm guessing obviously that was something that set you in a different path, but do you feel that's an underlying thing of, of, of everywhere that you are today? Or do you feel like that was just the first pebble that started an avalanche? Do you, like, do you see the distinction I'm trying to make there? I think so. Yeah. I, I think it was definitely the point. Like, don't get me, before that, before that event, I, I was, I was at the stage where I was, I wasn't happy in my job and I, and I was always thinking that I can't spend the next 40 years or so waking up in the morning and hating where I'm going to, and what I'm hating going to do. You know, I, I was at that point and I, and I thought, you know, I, I need to, I need to find something else, but I think I would just always come back into my comfort zone. I would always think like, well, what could I go and do the thought of changing and moving on to something else? I thought, you know, another thing that used to put me off as well was I got to a certain point of earning a certain bit of money and I thought changing careers would mean a, dro a drop down in the amount of income that I would get because I'd have to start at the bottom somewhere, which was another thing that always pushed me back. Yeah. Um, and obviously I'd, I'd always thought about, you know, the only other option would be to do something that was on the side at the same time. But like, like I said, you, you just, I always thought with the way that I worked and the amount of hours that I'd done, I just couldn't see a way of doing it. Gotcha. So I suppose then so here's the distinction. So I suppose you had your wake up moment, which gave you an awareness that you wanted to change. You needed to change. And then from there you had several months where maybe you sort of thought of changing, but then it was like, Oh, but that's not going to fit in with my work schedule. And then you maybe like, you know, you try something, you'd explore an idea, but then you stay within your comfort zone. So it sounds like you took a while to kind of oh, like, yeah. you're maybe testing. Yeah, definitely. A hundred percent. Gotcha. Uh, so, so when you went all in with SFM, um, and literally decided, I'm got like I'm going for this. What What do you think was the the def the defining um, moment or mindset shift? Like, what made you go from that point of testing those comfort zones and trying to you know trying to go for it but not quite to suddenly going boom and making that leap and then from there just just going on like a personal development rampage? What was the trigger that started that? Well, to be honest, I think it was a conversation that me and you had, really. Um, it was, I would always, I got to a point where every time I I thought about it, I think, if I don't do this, I'm just going to be in, this, in the position I am now. But 20 years that I was looking like, I would be in that, where I didn't, looking at them people who were in my company who were 20 years older. And yeah. I, I, I knew I didn't want to be there, you know. And 
and the worst thing like that would happen, I could go for it. And if it doesn't work out, do you know what I mean? What's the worst thing that can happen, really? I'm just going to be exactly the same as I am now. And that was something that you sort of put across to me. So once I, once I had that, that thought in my head that, you know, I, I can just go for it. And if it comes off, it's going to change my life forever and give me everything that I want. But if it doesn't come off, I'm going to be in exactly the same position I am now. So what really have I got to lose? That, that was the, that's, every time I had a doubt, that's all I kept thinking in my head. And that's what really just tipped me over the edge. That's a, that's a great point. What do you have to lose? Or uh, the, the other thing is, what are your other options? You know, when you're looking at those people that are 20 years on in your profession and you know you don't want to be there, like, what are your other options? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. You know, you can, you can restart in a different career, but, you know, so many of the traditional careers, they're kind of the same. So you guys have similar paths about working, you know, 78 hours a week, lots of lots and lots of long hours in your traditional jobs. Um, how did you, Lewis, how did you find the time? You know, where, where do you fit it in? Because that's it's a common, and I'm going to say, excuse that people have. I don't have the time to do this. How did you figure that out? How did you steal time? <laughs> it hasn't been easy, um, I've got to say. I, I've actually had to sort of... Um, like my girlfriend's fully on board with everything that I, I, I'm trying to do, and she knows why I'm doing it and everything like that but I've had to sort of cut down the time spent with her because it was when I was around her with her, it was like, I wasn't focused, you know? So I needed the time when I wanted to work, I needed time to be on my own. So I would set evenings where it would just be like, obviously if I weren't working late, I'd have my evenings where it would just be right. I'm, I'm working tonight, go to my, in my place, get in my zone. And that was it. And another big thing as well is, getting up earlier in the mornings and finding time in the mornings. So, whereas before I was just one of them people who would alarm would go off snooze three or four times, get in a rush, be late for work, all that sort of stuff that, and then repeat that every day. But now I set myself enough time to get up in the morning, go through my routines and, and do a bit of work in the morning, which is much better for me than the evening as well, because it's when I'm much more awake and, and in, in state in flow and I find it much easier to do it that way. Awesome. Perfect, buddy. Yeah. That's great. I, I personally, I use mornings too because like nothing's pinging, nothing's ringing, nobody's trying to get a hold of me. It's it's your <laughs> private time. Um, that's awesome. So, did you have any? Um, how do you see your your future now compared to? how you saw your future then obviously you didn't want to be that guy that you're standing next to who's 20 years on <laughs> how do you see it now i just my outlook has changed on so many things like whereas before i i, I couldn't see a way out now i do see a way out where i saw before where well, I saw sort of like risk now I see opportunities and, and things like that it, it's just my perspective on things have changed and I and my eyes, eyes have been open to like the digital economy and the possibilities of what you can do with if you just work hard and open up your mind to to, to other things you know I'd always heard about people who make an income online and stuff like that, but it was just like, it, it didn't happen in my world. That weren't a thing that happened. You know, it was just yeah. like everyone worked nine to five or they, they worked in a trade and they were self-employed and you would do that. You would get a mortgage, ha have kids. And then, do you know what I mean? Like, and I've I love traveling. Like, Dan, well, I love traveling. You know, I, I, I had dreams of, of, of traveling before and not having to worry about a mortgage and payment and things like that, you know? So it's just, I don't think that there's any way that I could go back the way that I was now, now that my eyes have been open to what, mm. what you can do. I, I could never just, now that I've been involved in this community and, and seen what's possible, I can never go back to my old way of life and just settle for a nine to five job ever again. So there's, there's only one way that this is going to end for me and it doesn't matter how long it takes. It's, it's, it, I will get there. It just, it's just a matter of time in my opinion. Awesome. 
that's incredible but that's awesome i know we had that conversation in the early stages and i know it's one of the things i was like look if you never give up if you never quit no matter what the only the only outcome is that we succeed like we can fail a thousand times if we never quit we will get there eventually it's inevitable and to see like you you're now saying that as well i'm like yes lewis that's awesome <laughs> that's really cool. um, and, and you mentioned there's a couple of things that i want to pick up on that you said so one is um uh, like you knew that earning money online was real you knew that building an online business was real just didn't feel that it was real for you and i think so yeah. many people can totally relate to that that it's like they see that it's real but it's like you know being a billionaire everyone knows it's possible to become a billionaire but it's so but that don't happen to me. far <laughs> removed. <laughs> yeah, but that, yeah, that kind of stuff doesn't happen to me. You know, that's not for me. Yeah, that's for them. It's that. You know, yeah, that yeah. Thinking. Um, and another one as well, uh, mate. You've been coming out with them. I've just got to pull it up because it's so important. It's this mentality that, or, or this, um, if it's too good to be true, then it probably is. And I talked about this in a video that I shot yesterday, for which the audio <laughs> didn't record. But <laughs> it is so. It's such a powerful thing that just sabotages us. And we don't realise it because we speak to so many people that have this view that, like, oh, if it's too, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Well, if it looks too good to be true, therefore it probably is. And therefore you don't, you know, go through or look at it or consider whatever (laughs) you're looking at. Then all you're ever going to get is mediocre at best because everything that's good, you're like, ah, too good to be true. What? (laughs) Like all you're going to have is crap in your life, basically. And I was (laughs) like, you got like, you can't, you, um, so for yourself, Lewis, um, you mentioned that, when you came into this, you thought you were going to learn the marketing education and the, you know, how to build a business, which of course is part of the journey. But then you mentioned what you learned was so much more than that. What would you yeah. say has been your biggest takeaway, biggest lesson, biggest thing you've learned on this journey so far that you didn't expect you were going to learn? Um, for me, definitely the biggest thing is stepping outside my comfort zone and facing fears and limiting beliefs. Cause that is just something that I've struggled with, for most of my life, most of the big decisions I've made in my life have always been controlled by that fear of like, like we were saying, you know, like that, that, like that sort of stuff doesn't happen to me. You know, I'm, I'm just, it's like I was, my destiny was just to work a normal job, maybe have enough to retire comfortably at the age of 66 or whatever it is. And you know, that was just, that was just pre-programmed in my head. It's the way all my friends are. It's just the people you, who surround you it's just the way that the life is for us you know and but now my belief system has completely changed my like I said my my confidence like for example doing this getting out going out and meeting people at meetups that I've never met before would never ever have done that in a million years putting myself on camera and putting it on Facebook for people that I don't know to watch that's just another, another one that even now looking back on it I just think oh my god I can't believe I even do that but yeah, that, it, it's amazing for me though, because it's something that I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to be able to push out of that, you know, and be able to be comfortable and be more confident in front of people. But I would always just go back into my comfort zone and just, you know, I'd make excuses for why I didn't need to do that, why I don't need to be putting myself out there and doing stuff like that. I'd be like, oh, I'm happy as I am, <laughs> happy as I am. But yeah, mm-hmm. so that that is it for me so far. It's just doing a lot of that sort of, uh, limiting beliefs and pushing past that and pushing out my comfort zone definitely that's yeah that is so important to be to take take that on and move through it whatever it is everybody has their their own fear of this or fear of that but to to face it and move through it is is key to do anything in life really whatever it is that you want to accomplish and uh, we touched on it earlier the, the fact that you saw that you could do something different that you you went searching for something is so important because so many people you know they just they're so set in their ways and everybody else does this so this is how it is you know work for 40 years or whatever you know and hope you can retire somebody who's watching this and is in that mindset they're working the traditional job and they probably don't have anybody around them that has done something different to be an example for them, what sort of advice would you give them? You know, Matt, you know, if you're talking to this guy one-on-one, ran into him somewhere, 
what would you tell him? How do you think you could change his perspective? Well, I, I, I just think I'd, I'd just have to draw my own experience for it, really. And just, you know, that, that if there was someone talking to me about it, then they are obviously looking for something more. You know, that you, you get to a point where like, I would never have found Dan's ad or anything like that if I weren't already looking for something else. So you've just got to get, get out of your own way to 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 believe that you do deserve better that there is something out there better for you and it can happen to you and that you have everything that you need to make a better life you already have it you just got to tap into your own potential and you've got to be able to just push through the years of pre-programming and rewire what's in your brain to 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 believe that you know you haven't just got to conform to the way that everyone else is and work a, a job that you hate until you hit the retirement age and then hopefully have enough money to to enjoy your life then you know there's not even no guarantees of that <clears throat> so i think you've just got to, you've got to, you've got to find what what motivates you what drives you inside and you've just got to, you've just got to work on that you've got to, you've got to really just you've got to have a clear vision of what you want and you just got to, you just got to be so focused on it that nothing, like Dan's always said to me, you just got to be like, nothing will get in my way of reaching this target. This is what I'm aiming for. And whenever you feel like you're falling off the way or you get a bit disheartened or anything like that, you just got to have that, that, that reason, the why in, in you, why you're going for it. And then it will just bring you straight back to, and give you that drive to keep going. Great advice. Have that why. Yeah. Sorry, Dan, were you going to say something? No, no, that's right, buddy. I know we've, uh, I think we've had one of those calls where we're both so keen to say <laughs> stuff. We <laughs> like jumping in over each other. No, Sorry. that's all good. Um, <laughs> Lewis, yeah, yeah, you will be. Lewis, <laughs> I was going to say, um, in terms of your take five years from now, right? It sounds like the, you know, you, the way you see your future now naturally is like the polar opposite of, of how you, um, saw your future before so other people in your life so let's say um close ones friends family members so on and so forth um if somebody's in a position where maybe they're uh they they have skeptical loved ones significant others who aren't sure about it and and that could potentially knock them off the way and like lose sight of their vision and their focus and so on what would you say to that kind of person if they're in a space where they're um you know, they, they, they don't want to obviously break down relationships with people they love, but the people they love are through love and care, maybe skeptical of them starting this journey. Um, well, I've got a big part of that in my, in myself with worrying about what my parents would think and, and other, like other people, as you know, I had big fear, fear of, uh, of that sort of judgment. But I think at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's your life and you've got to do whatever you feels right for you. You know, you only get one shot at it. And ultimately, if, like you said, most people's judgment or uh, cynicism about it comes out of care and love for you, you know, they don't want to see you. Because a lot of the time, like you say as well, it's, it's fear because it's something that they don't understand or, or something that they feel that they can't do. So they think, oh, you know, and they don't want to see you end up getting disappointed maybe that you you know because they because they have it in their head that they can't do it so you've just got to you've got to stick to your guns really that's what all, I, all I'm going to do and just you know I use it as a bit of motivation really too as well because I've had people sort of with a bit of a cynicism and I, I just think well I can't wait to prove you wrong you know <laughs> that's, not, that's, that's another way I look at it you know and and you know the day will come and you know and and if they want to if they want help with 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 how I got started and how I can help them do it, then I'll be glad to help. And, and that would, yeah. that would give me more joy than anything to be able to help people close to me to, to achieve the same thing. Cause I know that there's, well, I could, I could lose count of the people that, that I know that would want the same sort of lifestyle and, and to just find, find a bit of fulfillment in, in their lives and, you know, and, and a bit of happiness in what they do day to day. Mm. Yeah. So I love that using it as fuel. That's really, really good advice is, you know, take, take that negative energy and just use that as another reason 
to go follow your dreams and, you know, do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, how did, how did you find, um, we, we all come to things with our, our, um, preconceived notions of what it's going to be like. And you already talked about how it's kind of upside down from what you thought it was going to be. You know, there's, there's obviously great marketing training there and we have oh, that yeah. in the community, but, um, what about the actual community? Um, I know that for me, it's really important to have people on a similar journey to help me along the way and, you know, be a guidepost or support, or whatever. Um, have you found that beneficial? Was it, did, did you think that was going to be here or? I, I did not, I did not expect it at all. A hundred percent did not expect it. And I can honestly say hand on heart that I wouldn't be here today if it weren't, weren't for the fact of how strong the community is and how willing I've never been in an environment where you have so many people who are willing to go out of their way to help you. Like in every job that I've had, it's sort of, I was thinking about this earlier and it, if something goes wrong or if you need it, like it's like people almost look to blame each other and stuff like that in what I do and, and shift the blame from themselves and not help it, you know, and rather step over someone else to make themselves look better. And, and it's just a, a complete mirror opposite to, you know, I, I was, I can't think, I was, it wasn't even a few weeks that I was in and you were just getting people approaching you like after I'd done my first video and the 90 day video challenge, you, the amount of people that you get just message you privately on, on Facebook and the amount of support you get to push you through. Like I honestly believe that I wouldn't have got anywhere near as far as I am now. And I probably wouldn't have even stuck to it if it weren't for the fact that you got so much support around you. And I know it's a thing that comes up a lot once, once you sort of get in this space, but like to be, around like-minded people is just so powerful as well because when I go back <laughs> when I go back to work and I'm around people and, and I see the way that they think and I think oh my god I can't believe I used to think like that you know I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just so far removed from that now because I, I it's just like another world honestly I'm it's like I'm on the outside looking in at that now and I look at them and I think I, I hope I wasn't like that <laughs> <laughs> It's a totally different path, isn't it? We just, you know, we join this community and we suddenly start going in a different direction. And do you find as well, like people in day to day life, you know, friends that you had before, social circles you were in before, suddenly doesn't seem quite so appealing when you see like this, this um, yeah. new mindset and yeah, people that are supportive, collaborative, creative, that, that help boost each other up. It's not quite appealing the same anymore, is it? No, no, no. I don't spend half as much time with a lot of people as I used to, you know, and it's not like, you know, a lot of them are close friends of mine. I still say that they are friends, but I just think, I don't know, maybe just our values are aligned differently now or something like that. You know, I've just, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's, it is weird. Yeah. It's, it is a tricky one. It's something that I struggled with at first as well, because I felt like I was, it was like leaving one life and starting a new life, you know, and it was, it was really just, everything was changing. And it was just like, I was fighting, uh, fighting it a little bit in my own head. I was fighting myself, you know, I was pushing back against myself, but you sort of get to a point where, you know, people are either going to be, either going to just support you or they're not, do you know what I mean? But yeah. at the end of the day, I know the reasons for why I'm doing it. And the people that I care about most are going to benefit from it. And if they want to stay in my life and, and be part of that, then they can be. And if they don't, then they don't. And that's just the way it is, unfortunately. <laughs> don't, don't you find Steve, that every now and then we talk to someone and you just kind of get that, not a feeling, but like, you know that they're going to, to make it and get to where they want to get yeah. to because they have that drive, they have that determination. Yeah, I think yeah. I think we might be speaking to one of those people now. I just get that feeling. <laughs> yeah. Is Lewis, your, your your mindset, your your perspective is just dead on. I I love listening to you because everything you say, I'm like, yes, yes, he's got it. He's got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trust, trust me, three three or four months ago, I would not have been sounding anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel? Do you feel like a different person inside than you did three or four months ago or do you feel like the same but just kind of new and improved and upgraded no I, I, I don't know it's a hard question like I said my my outlook is completely changed on every like everything honestly like it's, it's so weird like 
like from what I've been involved in it as well, it's not just like the marketing and the mindset. Like I, I you know, I, I never used to read books. I read books now and I, I've got like a, like a, like a hunger to learn. Whereas, you know, learning was something that I associated with school and I hated school, you know, but now I love yeah. it. I love being able to learn new things and, you know, I, I, it's all about like your mind and your body and stuff like that. I'm eating healthier, working out, I'm managing my money better, which I was terrible with before I used to live month to month and just, you know, money used to come out quicker than I it come in, you know, and that was just, yeah. that was it. But now I, you know, I read books on, on money management and, you know, I've just, I'm just so excited for what, for what's to come. Honestly, I, I really am. <laughs> so you've been unleashed, mate. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. hundred yeah, percent. hundred <laughs> percent makeover of Lewis. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Dan, <laughs> sounds I, like we should turn that into a separate show. <laughs> Lewis's makeover. Lewis's makeover. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there we go. Reality show. Done. <laughs> well, I think that's Dan. Unless you've got something else, I think that's a great place to wrap it up. You know, your your mindset is dead on, and I know it's going to be inspirational for people that see this. So I appreciate yeah. you taking the time to do this show with us, and I know a lot of people are going to get a great benefit out of hearing your story, and and you know probably be inspired that they can do it too well yeah. i hope so hope so <laughs> yeah, right. thanks for having me on as well yeah, yeah. same much value yeah the, don't worry mate everyone's journey 100 percent. like we go down the path that we're meant to go down to learn the lessons that we need to learn to become the person that we need that we're going to be exactly to achieve what yeah. we want to achieve so yeah mate you've been a, a real shining element of that like i don't say this often but i'm so <laughs> you, like you've done all the, you know for the progress you've made the shifts that you've made and like even mate the first time that i spoke to you three or four months ago literally hearing you now we've had so much value crammed into this call with the stuff that you've come out with and like you said three or four months ago you mate just talking to you an entirely different person and it just shows how much you've absorbed the community and the people and the you know the mentorship and the lessons that you've learned and really put that into practice so Ilan said it to me when he interviewed me, um, I don't know how many months ago it was now, maybe like 10, 11 months or something, I reckon. Similar sort of format as this. And he, was, he said a similar thing to me when I say to you, like with your mindset and what you're doing and the actions you're taking, it's inevitable that you will succeed. So when you ever, if you have moments where you doubt yourself, if you have moments where you're like, I don't know if I can do this, if you're unsure, mate, just remember that is part of the process and you are walking this path. And if you don't give up, which I don't think you will, then you will get there. It is inevitable. So congratulations, buddy. I'm, I'm really proud of you. And uh, thank you for doing the show with us. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> and guys watching, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate you as well. Hope you've enjoyed this show and we will see you next week for another Stephen Dan show. Thanks very much. Bye for now. Take care.